Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Heavenly Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It's about forgiveness this morning, and it's about awareness of sin. Some people are highly aware of their shortcomings, of their lovelessness. To me, that's what sin is, because the Ten Commandments are about love. And um, the breaking of the Ten Commandments is lovelessness in relationships. How'd you do this week? Hmm? How'd you do with your spouse? Always loving? Or are you a little short with her or with him? A little impatient, a little demanding? How are you with your uh, constituents, your customers, the people you are paid to serve? A little chintzy, a little stingy, put them off. I had uh, run home about Thursday, there was a repair to me be made at home and I had to call, I couldn't do it myself, so I had to call a professional. And it really irritated me. Uh, at first, I was overjoyed because the guy said I could come today. He says, I'll come right after my a early AM project. I'll call you around uh, noon and let you know I'm on the way. He never called. Then he promised to call later in the afternoon. He never called. Then he pr called at the end of the day. He did call at the end of the day. He says, I can't come today at all. Now, I know those things are ha happening, but I was highly disappointed because it was kind of a crisis and an emergency. When you come up short on love, how do you handle it? Do you say, oh, I'm a busy person, or uh, that's too much of a demand? Or do you fall on your knees and acknowledge that you aren't the person you're supposed to be, and you look for a resolution to the problem? Today's lessons have many stories. It's In a way, it's easy to preach on because there are stories here to draw from. Real historical stories and a story within the stories, kind of like Shakespeare, a play within a play. The first story has to do with real people, much like your life. You're a real person. You have a story. You have a life. And some things go well and some things are, are setbacks. Some things are under your control and some things are out of your control. Some days you sail through the day being the person God wants you to be, and sometimes, in a way, it might have been better if you never got out of bed. You hurt a lot of people, and you hurt the, lo the Lord. This real story happened about a guy named David, and he was a king. What do you associate with monarchs and royalty? Wasn't it yesterday or the day before Queen Elizabeth had her 90th birthday. You think you have nice birthday parties. You should have seen hers. I mean, they pulled out all the stops. The Queen of England had all this attention. King David had a lot of resources too. He was a king. He had a palace. He had riches. He had income. He had a wife. And in those days, Middle Eastern culture, I yet haven't tried to f figure this one out, he had concubines. He had many lovers from which to choose. He had an army. He had power. He had prestige. And yet it wasn't enough. He wanted somebody else's wife. And to get Uriah's wife, he killed Uriah. That's a pretty loveless act. But he wasn't remorseful about it. He had no self-awareness, or at least he denied it. I think that happens sometimes. We know what we did was loveless, was against God's commands of love, and we just kind of stuff it, don't we? I'm really good at that. So are you. Oh, it wasn't that bad. She deserved it. huh? Life is tough. He doesn't treat me any better, and we stuff it. That's what King David did. He had so much to choose from, yet he stole from somebody else's meager resources, and he did it in a wicked way. And the real problem was he didn't embrace his own sinfulness. How are we going to get through King David? God wanted David to be aware of his offense. So he sent a prophet. His name was Gary. No, just teasing. His name was Nathan. 
And God's man, Nathan, knew what his commission was. It was to get David to embrace his sinfulness so he was prepared or poised for what God is best at, giving forgiveness. So Nathan gives, makes an appointment with David. And when he comes in, he tells a story. A story within a story. The real story, and now a fictional story. It's a parable. It was a parable. And the parable, as you know, was something like this. A rich traveler comes into the area, and, he, and, and the king wants to uh, entertain him. So instead of going to his own pantry, he steals the one and only prized possession of a poor man. A little puppy. No, my wife loves puppies. But that would be like taking Bilbo away from Jane. His most prized possession, a ewe lamb, the family pet. I think it says it slept in the bed with a master, okay? And he slaughters the lamb and feeds it to the traveler, okay? And Nathan, in this fictional story, get it? Factual story, fictional story, to make a point, says, what do you think should happen to the rich man who stole the poor man's one prize possession? And David, without batting an eye, said, he should be killed. And Nathan just as quickly said, you are the offender. You are the offender. And it catches David. And David falls to his knees. And he says, I have sinned against the Lord. It's the great leveler, you know, sin. Sin is just some people don't embrace it. Some people stuff it. Some people deny it. But it's the great leveler because if you can embrace your sin, if you can embrace your lovelessness, if you can embrace this shortcoming, huh, then you are poised, you're down on your knees and postured for what God does the best, which is forgiveness in Jesus. Story number two, historical story. Advance about 2,000 years. The Lord Jesus is doing his ministry. This is before his passion. The Lord Jesus was always in loving mode. He loved the Lord his God, the, his Father, with all his heart, soul, and mind, and he loved his neighbors, even his enemies, even his enemies. That's part of his work, his salvation work, leading the loving life us guys don't do. All right? And... <coughs> A certain time, you know the story, the text was read. He's invited to dinner. Like that. That's nice. I like that. Invite me to dinner, Tom. I'll come. Okay. But the host was kind of stingy. The host was about himself. You see, he had prestige. He had position. He was a Pharisee. He went to the synagogue. And, and he, he let it be known what a great guy he was. Great guy on the outside. Well, not even the outside. Because when Jesus came, he isn't given a glass of wine. He's not given appetizers. He isn't asked to sit down in a big lazy boy chair and relax and make himself at home. No, it's kind of cold, hmm? this Pharisee. And in those days when you came, uh, when you, uh, you came, you took off your sandals. And what did they do? Well, sandals are open-toed shoes and your feet would get dirty. So uh, when we went to Japan um, over there, you always took off your shoes, not because our feet was dirty, but because it's the customary thing to do, I guess, to keep their house nice, to keep whatever dirt's on the shoes outside of those homes. The host didn't wash his feet. Hmm? The host didn't give him an appetizer or a glass of wine. The host didn't do anything, but an, another person does. A scandalizing woman, hmm, a sinner, a prostitute. She had a reputation too, but it wasn't up here. It was down here. And all the eyes, eyebrows of the people in attendance were raised. What's she doing here? What's she doing here? But not Jesus. His eyebrows didn't go by. He didn't ignore her. He didn't dismiss her. 
Hmm? And she gave to him what you think the, the prestigious guy would have done. She wet his feet, not even with tap water, but with her tears. She washed his feet with those tears till they were clean. She dried those now clean but still wet feet with her hair. And then she did what she couldn't afford. She anointed his feet with an expensive perfume. And Simon didn't do any of those. And Simon was critical of the woman. So Jesus tells a story. And the story is about two people who were in debt. One a little bit, one a lot. Both were forgiven their debts like one that's debt $16, one $116. And the Lord Jesus, God through the Lord Jesus, who is very generous, forgives both of the debts. And he asked Simon, which of these do you think was more grateful? Which the, he's answered correctly, the one who was forgiven a lot. That was the scandalizing woman. Hmm. She loved much because she was forgiven much. The great leveler, sin and the availability of Jesus in forgiveness. Last couplet story. A man came, a traveler. No, let me back up. I need to tell you, this is your story. You're a real person. You have a name. It's not Simon, but you have a name. You have an orbit. You go about day by day, hmm, and you have sins. But how do you handle that depravity? Me, I have a, I draw on myself like, I'm a sinner, but I'm also a pastor. I'm a pastor, so my sins are small. Hmm. In fact, some of you actually think I don't sin. You keep thinking that. I like that, okay? But the leveler that I need is to embrace my sinfulness and to know I'm just as loveless as the people in the other stories and as the rest of the world. And I need to get on my knees and poise to receive the forgiveness that I need. You have the same position. You have the same position. But sometimes we're kind of stuck. So I'm going to tell you a story. A traveler came to the Imperial Valley. He was a real estate developer. This is fictional now. Got it? Not fact. The first one is fact, you and me. And he came to the Imperial Valley, and he wanted to do some good. He wanted to build some resorts and some houses and make, make, d make a contribution to society, create jobs. Mm -hmm. So he went to the mountains over there on I-8. And he went up to the mountains, and he got to the mountains, and <coughs> this real estate developer who had altruistic plans. And the mountains said, now you can tell it's fictional, right? These mountains talked, the ones right down the front, the ones you could see. These mountains talked, and they said, what are you doing here? And he says, well, I'm, a, I'm an out-of-state out of real estate developer. I came up here to look and see if I could build maybe some log cabins here, kind of a resort for families amongst these beautiful trees and this cooler weather, and, and maybe some houses and maybe some recreational things, okay? And the mountain said, we don't need you. These mountains did. We're mountains. We have height. We're big and massive, and we're tall. We don't need any help here. In addition to that, we're on the way to San Diego. And people like going to San Diego. So they come through us, the mountains. We're so important. So the real estate developer turned his back and he came back down the slopes and he, and he came to the plains and he came to the desert. And he, came, and he came and he looked around and he noticed some of this desert was below sea level. Sea level, really low, really low. And the people said, hello, can I help you? The valley said, hello, can I help you? 
and the real estate fellow. So I'm from out of state, and I thought I could make some contributions here. I like to build some nice houses and and uh, maybe a water park for your families and things like that, like that. If if you're willing, and so we're willing. You just come right on in, and you just build your your s build away, build away, because we want what you have to offer. By the way, the people in the valleys and on the plains and in the mountains were church going, a church going mountain. And when the church going mountains come to church, they'd always sit in the best places. And they'd always prance in down the front of the aisle. Here I am. I helped build this church. I own this pew. I said, and you can't sit here. You can't sit here. You pay attention to me. And also, I'm an officer. And when he'd see some of the valleys, they were church-going valleys, church-going under sea level places, deep wells. And they'd always shoosh them aside, and they'd make the valley sit in the back. And they wouldn't ask the valleys, the mountains wouldn't ask the valleys to do anything important in the church. You can scrub the floors, hmm, but you can't be an officer. You can have an idea, but don't share it with us because we ain't going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. They were church going, these are. But one part of the topography population didn't get the great leveling, and the others did. The mountains needed to come down a little bit, and the valleys go up. Are you ready? for the great leveler? Are you ready to come down a little bit, to shave off that peak of arrogance that you and I have? Are you ready to come to Jesus and accept what he has to offer, which is forgiveness, full and rich, and almost instantaneous. You know, did you notice in the first lesson, David, he was forgiven immediately? If I were God, I wouldn't have done that. I would have made him stew a little bit. I'll think about forgiving him. But instantly, and he does that with you, instantly, as soon as you drop to your knees, instantly. And if you're one of those valleys, and you are poised, and you have received God's forgiveness, are you ready to show it? Are you ready to show it? That's my problem. I have a lot of problems. But that's my problem. I read about God's grace every day, but I don't show it. I don't grow in generosity. But I'm ready for the great leveler. How about you? And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds and your knees, <laughs> your knees on Christ Jesus into life everlasting.